What's up, everyone? Molly and I recently had the chance to go out to San Diego Comic-Con to cover Star Wars Outlaws, but while we were there, we also saw the Lucasfilm publishing panel and had the chance to interview some of the authors of The High Republic. So this interview here is with George Mann, Charles Soule, Kevin Scott, and Justina Ireland. Please enjoy. Uh, first up, thank you for taking some time out of your con schedule to talk with us. Uh, are all of you relieved that you don't have to ask or answer the question, where is Barry anymore, <laughs> first of all? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I think so. yeah. Oh, if you want to pick up the microphones. Oh. <laughs> yes. Just, yeah, kind of. <laughs> just, just relieved he's alive, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. I was, well, now you've just shifted to still and Geos. Uh, cruelty. So, <laughs> do you just? But he's definitely dead. We just like there is no ba- there are no badges coming. You know, no. there is no Geos lives. It's not. It's gone. Yet. Uh, but phase two is complete. Are there any elements from those stories that you might recommend fans take a second look at before we <laughs> get into phase three shortly here? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Reread all of them again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's relevant. Yeah. 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 Great. Uh, George, on a scale of the Battle of Dalna to Loden Great Storm, how much do you plan on hurting us in Eye of Darkness? Ooh, maybe in seven and a half. Okay, okay. The hurt is not always the point. Mm. It's, it's, there are other things these stories can do too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they offer hope sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the point of, of you know of Star Wars, isn't it? Is to to find the hope even in the darkest moments. So, you know, it's Eye of Darkness is a story that's exploring that amongst other things. But you know, the, the Jedi have had a lot of loss, and um, both in terms of like people that they've lost, friends, um, and also the beacon, the symbol. Um, but they're dealing with that. And they're, they're trying to work their way through it. So they're not in a great place, but they're still Jedi. They haven't given up hope. Mm. And, I mean, High Republic fans do like to joke about uh, everything that you put us through. But, yeah, they, they all, all of these stories always end on a very hopeful note. I, I have to assume <laughs> Phase 3 will you do the same. You wait till the end. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I think one thing that's actually really great about Phase 3 is how, how it feels very, very different from Phase 1 or Phase 2. Like, it, the, the stories that you're going to read are... Um, like the, it, they just they just feel like they're exploring new ideas and new new concepts and new things for these characters to go through, which is which is what it it should be. I don't you know we we're all super proud of phases one and two, but I I think we wanna and and are, have always been planning to explore new ground in the stories and and the stuff I've read of phase three really really does a good job of feeling very fresh and cool. Yeah, and and, and hope is is always best when it's hard won. I think that, mm-hmm. that's one of the messages of Star Wars as well. You know, it's like fight, fight for what you believe in, um, and and when you achieve that, it's it's all the, the richer from it. And these characters are still there; they're still going. You know, and even the ones who are at their darkest point, there's still something in them that keeps them going day to day. You know, every day is a victory, yeah. um, and all those victories start to come together. And I think that's where we, what we're going to see. Mm. Uh, well, part of the darkness right now, at the end of phase one, we learned about the occlusion zone. So how has that changed and shaped the galaxy in the years since it was introduced? Whoever wants to cut. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not like Germany wasn't, like, completely, <laughs> you know, when the, when the wall went up, right? Like, it, it changes things, right? You know, there are there are people who are within the zone that want to get out. There are people who are out without a side of the zone who want to get in. And not only that, but like the connections that these characters have made to one another, you know, that's, it's, it's a, it's almost a physical manifestation of a lot of metaphorical and emotional walls that have gone up. And so I do think it's, it's, it's one of the more fun things I think of this phase because it's, it's given us storytelling problems that we have to work harder to solve. And then when we solve them, if they feel more satisfying to me. The, the thing I would add to that, too, is that it is um, the occlusion zone by its nature is a direct refutation of one of the big sort of theme statements of phase one, which is we are all the Republic. Like the High Republic says it all the time. And here the Nile have ex- like physically said, re- like made real, actually, no, we're not. And, and so it, it echoes a lot of the stuff we've been doing in, in a really like, as Justina said, like it's a really fun story element to play with because it works on so many levels within the story and within the themes. It's very cool. And I think one of the things, we, we're talking a lot about 
the you know, Jedi going through grief and coping with grief. But there's also characters who are thriving at this time, you know, and they're not necessarily the characters you'd expect. You know, there are characters within the zone who are having the time of their life um, for the best reasons. Um, and they're finding their, their re the reason to exist because of this happening. So uh, in all these situations, they're all growing. Uh, Justina, I'm really excited to revisit Vernestra Rowe after spending so much time apart from her. Um, the last time we saw her, or one of the last times we saw her, she had just learned about uh, this path that was given to her by Mari Santeca. I'm curious if it has any relation to maybe the occlusion zone or maybe a certain planet that we learned about. I'm making a oh, <laughs> face, and that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's all you get. And, and Mike, crumbs, is, Mike is nodding off screen. That's kind of what I figured the answer to that question would be. Uh, uh, but I also haven't had the chance to talk to you since Star Wars Celebration, and yeah. uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the fan reaction to getting to see Vernestra Rowe in live action. Yeah, so I didn't go to, to Celebration uh, London because I was just like family right like it's, you know but it was funny so I did awesome con in DC um, about a month ago and I think it's funny because I think I don't I don't get excited about things like lunch I get really excited about lunch <laughs> but like things that are happening that I have no control of I've kind of in my publishing experience realized it's like you just have to say like great this is a nice thing that happened move on the work there's still work and so um, when Mike told me, he's like, oh, you know, Vernesha's going to be in the Acolyte. I'm like, okay, that's nice. And he's like, aren't you excited? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm excited. This is excited. And so it's, it's think, I think right now there are fans who are more excited than I was because I think for them um, it's a new it's, – it's, it's, it's one of the, the things where you have a character in your head all the time. And for me, when I have a character in my head and then I put them on the page, it's kind of when I say goodbye to them. I'm like, now they belong to everybody else. And I think for a lot of readers who have had these characters, now they, for them, get to share that character with people who maybe don't read the books mm -hmm. or, or maybe are like, ah, that High Republic, I'm not going to admit a chance. So you know, now, now we're going to have like an on-screen depiction. So I think it's exciting. Like, I think it's great. I think it's, it's made a lot of our um, storytelling kind of feel bigger maybe than it it was meant to be at the time when it was especially when I was writing it I was just like this is a cool character um but I also think it's like I don't really see Vernestra as mine anymore I think she belongs to the fans and so I'm more excited for the fans to have that than than for me if that makes sense it does yeah and, and like, I I'm think just like good luck have fun guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you have summarized how we feel uh, that we're such big fans of everything that you all have done and to see it get to go to an audience who might just be like, oh, I just watch Star Wars. I don't read it, but like I grew up with the books. And so the books of Star Wars are very important to me and that I hope it's a gateway from series into the books yeah. and that more people will experience everything that you've done. Um, Kevin, uh, we got to see a little bit more about the upcoming Phase 3 comic. Uh -huh. uh, you revealed a look at the Children of the Storm yeah. in the panel. Can you tell us anything more about them? That noise you heard was Disney saying no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm, no, I, I really can't. I, I mean, figured. you know, that cover is a pointy-eared gentleman um, who has a history and is now a child of the storm. And that's pretty much all I can say. He has a history. Okay, interesting. I'll dig into that. <laughs> uh, we also saw Lorna D on the first cover. Yes. And uh, I, I think Mike himself said this, so I feel okay asking it, but were they working together? As I said, Lorna D works for Lorna D, and I don't think she, you know, she's, it's not gone well for Lorna whenever she's worked for someone else or with someone else. So, yeah, we'll see. But it's possible her interests might align with Lorna D's interest interests the are the most important interest in the galaxy at uh, <laughs> any one time. So, um, yeah, I, I think you don't turn your back on her. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. And Charles, we got to see uh, some more from the Shadows of Starlight and the, the four-issue series that will take place uh, in between that year of phases one and three. Uh, there was also a solicitation that came out that I saw that Yoda will have to touch the dark side to save the Jedi and the galaxy. Could you elaborate on that? I mean, I think it says it all. <laughs> uh, it says everything and nothing. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, 
Yoda does stuff, and he's very experienced, <laughs> and he, he knows how to handle tough situations, and he'll be in one, and you'll find out pretty soon. Yeah? Yeah. Well said. I don't Thank think you. anyone would have any more questions after that. I, I can't <laughs> imagine they would. I can't imagine they would. And I don't either, so uh, I'll let you all go and enjoy the rest of your con. But thank you again so much for taking some time to talk with us today. Of course. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs>